Good thoughts and actions can never produce bad results. Bad thoughts and actions can never produce good results. We understand this law in the natural world and work with it, but few understand it in the mental and moral world. James Allen. Hi, I'm Tamara Michelle. Welcome to Real Conversations, recorded and produced in Dauphin, a small farming community in central Manitoba. We have a lot of contributing farmers and food producers in the area. And today we discuss the Parkland Ukrainian Family Fund with local contributor Don Tarrant and chair of the board Rodney Juba. Thank you to our show sponsors, Bankert Marketing, Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa, Real Security Solutions, Roofs Furniture and Appliances of Dauphin, Oil Depot of Dauphin, Tri Family Health Beauty and Fine Gifts of the Paw, Cloud9 Canna Supplies, and Hearts to Nature Fine Art Nature Photography. We have some new guests, or I'm actually a guest, and here at Right Side with Don Tarrant and Rodney Juba. Uh, and we are here to discuss the Ukrainian, uh, sorry, the Parkland Ukrainian Family Fund. Correct. So I guess we're going to let you start, Don. I was okay. curious. I know you only have a few moments yeah. and then you're going to step out. Yeah. I was curious, you got involved in the project. We had Roman on the show earlier in April mm -hmm. and he kind of shared what it's about. I wanted to know how it is that you came to be involved and and why it was something that that you felt was really important. Well, we started, so we started back, I guess, you know, with the war broke out, it was unbelievable to actually think that was going to happen. And then uh, what it broke out is, you know, what can we do to, to help out? And so, I mean, I just, you know, you, you really want to do something. And, and so uh, you come up with the idea and I work with, uh, just come to me one Sunday saying, you know, like it's, you know, where we live is a really, really good place. I mean, we're safe. We got lost eat, we're warm. And I'm sitting at home with a granddaughter and, um, uh, you know, we got to you know, do our part to help these people. And just the idea come to me, and I had worked uh, that week with uh, Daryl Zamerka to get get it all figured out, uh, get it all put together. And Daryl had uh, was with the uh, uh, Full Cart Centre Museum and in Inc. So he was with them. He talked to the board. We had the decision that uh, within a day that they would take this project on. Um, so then we made an announcement of March the 9th to fundraise to bring families and when we started it, thought, well, we can do one or two families uh, was our initial goal. Um, then other people like Father Brett Kuzik and Lindsay Rubinick. Uh, Lindsay's an immigration, has her own immigration company and she works, she works with school division. Um, she got, she said, she's seen the idea, she said, I like it, let's, uh, I'll help out. So she's been a huge, huge help to get it going. Father Brent Kuzik helped, he says, okay, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll do my part too. And from there, Father Brent got uh, a committee, uh, asked Rodney to put a committee together, Rodney and, and Martin Van Lusen, and then they started the committee, uh, the, the family support team. So it's been, Started by myself and Daryl Zamercut and just grown uh, a whole lot since then. It sounds wonderful. Um, even from talking to Roman earlier in April, it, uh, it sounded like there was a huge group of people and privately funded, which yes. I think is, yeah. you know, as far as projects go, it's, that's really fascinating because it's very rare. A lot of projects would, would fall under like a government canopy, but this is something very specific. Uh, to the Dauphin and the Parkland area, yes. uh, well, the entire Parkland area, actually. And this is to bring Ukrainian families here so that they have a place to call home if they you know, so wish to immigrate uh, and move here under the circumstances there. So, Correct. So there's, so we have to go back to the point of the, of the committee, the people involved. So, so far, I mean, if you go back to Daryl Zamka and his daughter, his daughter's uh, made all the posters. I mean, they, so, so including there was 29 people working on this. And then we talked to Rodney and have a lot of back and forth with Rodney. Rodney's running the, the family support team and we've been communicating uh, almost like several times a day. And the you know, talks this morning, the, the volunteers, they're not volunteering. Um, everyone's on a mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are people are like driven like you wouldn't believe. And there's uh, Rodney's there to kind of control things <laughs> so I mean manage. you manage things or whatever else so, so yeah they get, we have no there's no there's no in Rodney's group specifically speaking to this group I mean there's no one saying okay you should do this you should do that it's just I'll do this and you know and uh, I'll do this and this and more so it's really great to have that teamwork and and, uh, and the interest 
And yeah, all the money that's, is all uh, donated money. There's no uh, government money. Um, there, you know, there is some assistance. Uh, the city of Dauphin have done. Have done um, they can't spend taxpayer money, but they've certainly been graceful in, in giving us uh, use of the room and Mark and Mark Tyne Van Lusen, uh, Rodney and Counselor. Um, you know, there's some stuff they're doing for um, thank you letters. They, you know, the, the, the council's writing that as well. So, you know, we we also have assistance from the local governments in a significant way um, as yeah, well. So it's almost like the, the people that are working for local government are also donating their time and energy um, is in effect, right? Absolutely, yes. And everyone brings their skill set, right? Because yes. we all know we all have strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. So people are coming in saying, this is what I'm good at. This is what I can yeah. offer, you know, whether it's it's monetary or time. Yeah. And like you said, it, it's so time heavy, yes. right? Yeah. That's, it's, it's just such a beautiful thing, I think, for the community, like when you see you know, with COVID and, and the last, you know, two years that we've had of being isolated, this is really bringing, it's, it's it, I mean, it's, obviously it's a horrible thing that's happening in Ukraine and we don't want this no. to be happening, but to see the community come together so harmoniously, yes. I think is the word I would yeah. use. You And like you said, uh, with a mission, this isn't someone saying, oh, I'm going to donate some time, no. you know, put my, put my time in. This is like a passion project. Yes, yeah, exactly. Wow, oh, that's wonderful. I know you have to get going, okay. so I just have one last yeah, question. Sure. Okay. Um, I know, I'm not going to speak to the amount, but I know that you made a large monetary donation. Yeah. And there's been others as well that are making a donations of different yeah. types, whether it's landlords that are giving up homes yeah. um, with, you know, discount in rent or, or no rent or whatever the, you know, agreements are. Yeah. Why? Why was it? Was this was this a way for you to kind of push the project forward, or what was your reasoning? Well, so we we started off at twenty five thousand um, dollars, and the reason is we wanted to make sure it was significant enough that people uh, would jump in and and be significant, uh, significant as, as much as they could as well. If we come in with five thousand dollars, it would have had I think a, a lesser effect of getting people motivated. Um, so I think it had to be significant, but. It also had, couldn't be too much, not that we wouldn't want to spend, you know, but, you know, if you come with uh, too much money, then everyone maybe would say, well, you know, they probably have enough, we don't want it. So basically it was hopefully a large enough curve to donate, but also a motivator to uh, to uh, keep going and not think there were sufficient. So um, the, the gifts and kinds, things I call gifts and kinds, but any of the housing and, and the furniture and fixtures, I mean, we don't have enough cash to pay for that, like not even close. And, and that's the Rodney's group is probably the money that they're going to, the money value of that is probably equal to the cash, if not maybe more. And without that, we wouldn't be looking at, you know, anywhere near where we are for people right now. So, um, you know, the goals changed. I mean, if we went from one to two, well, there were one to two people, and so, well, maybe we can do three to four, and now we're looking at 10, 10 to 12 is what we could possibly do. So that's, And that's a beautiful thing, because I think about Dauphin, and I think about bringing in, like with immigration, because yeah. let's face it, we're all immigrants, right. you know, yeah. whether you're fifth, yeah. fourth, third generation yeah. immigrants, we all are, yeah. um, we call this home yeah. and we've come to love and appreciate it. I know from talking to Roman, he said that this, the nature part of yeah. Dauphin and area, yeah. the farming, the, the the winters, everything about it, he said, it's like very much like Ukraine. Yes. He said it's very like home. So I thought that maybe that's why the settles, the settlers here did so well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like they were, you know, yeah. they had the the aptitude with with yeah. what they came from. So yeah, the country was you know, the Ukrainian people contributed immensely to the country. Like I mean, they and here they probably would be this, you know, the second biggest influence. You know, we have the uh, indigenous culture. But the Ukrainian people were probably the ones that, you know, that our biggest effect as we see right today, uh, our second biggest or equal to anyhow. But yeah, they would, with agriculture and just a natural for them. And, uh, and when uh, the Ukrainian first wave of Ukrainian settlers came, they came with the English and the Scottish and everyone, and it worked with the indigenous people in harmo uh, in harmony. So yes. that uh, that's how this area became very successful. Is yeah. that there was a, a friendship and trust relationship uh, amongst the different cultures, and that has made uh, the parkland area strong. And history is. is is repeating itself because of reconciliation, because of uh, the openness of uh, the, the Dauphin community to this project. We we're seeing we're seeing uh, under duress uh, people. That, 
uh, forced out of their homes in Ukraine. Uh, Canada is high on their uh, the wish list of for. Uh, uh, for, for the people to come to, and we're making it happen here. And it's great. It's just been a wonderful exercise. No, it's a beautiful thing. I guess we'll let you yep, exit, we'll Don. In. Thank we're you so in. much for taking the time. Thank you. And I'm going to hop over, I guess, into the other seat, and yep. we'll continue. Right on. Okay, okay, thanks, okay. Don. Thank you. Take care, Don. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we are continuing on here with Rodney Juba and uh, talking about the Parkland Ukrainian Family Fund. Don had to step out. He had another appointment but uh, really nice to have his time available to us. And uh, Rodney, from what I understand, you're a big part of this project. Ian, I mean, everybody is. I understand that. But I mean, there's something that you are able to offer as far as the management side of things. Uh, well, actually, I was sort of all told that I was going to be the chairperson of this group. So what I, I, I at first, it was a very daunting, uh, um, I thought about it for a minute or two, but I realized that the, uh, the team of people that I had at the table were excellent people and are, are excellent people. And they, uh, we sort of, that's how we got uh, going with the, uh, with the meeting. The first couple of meetings were kind of like strategic planning meetings, you know, we were sort of trying to find where we all have our skill sets matching uh, uh, people to the subcommittees on our committee so that we have the right people in the right uh, committee to match the skills that, the, that they uh, that they bring to the table. And we, we're all A plus personalities, so there's lots of energy in the room. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, and that's a big yeah. part of it, right, yeah, is the sure. positivity, um, encouraging one another, coming up with ideas, you know, take, you know, taking the best ideas and moving forward. And yeah, I, I just, I didn't realize that, it, like, I think when I heard about it, it was sort of, not that it was small, it was in, in its infancy, I guess. And um, you're saying now, uh, from talking here with Don earlier, how much time would you say you're committing to this on a daily basis, even? Just in um, communications, even? Just in cu communications, well, uh, four to five hours. Uh, I, I get emails from uh, the committee members because... Uh, Everything's flowing. There's uh, there's bursts of information being shared from uh, from uh, Don. He sends information to myself and then uh, delegate it to whomever on the committee. Or I I, uh, I just take the action myself. Where if it's something I can do without uh, uh, committee support. And everybody's involved. Everybody. Uh, the, the 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 interesting thing about this committee is. We know each other from the community, but we don't know each other in the sense that the energy and, and you know what I mean, and point of view, and you know, and so we're sort of feeling that part of it out because, uh, and everything is happening fast. So, but everybody is so gracious when, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I'm getting to know people on the committee at a different perspective than, uh, like, I don't want to mention names, but there's people on there on the committee, and they're 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 seeing me at a different uh, mm -hmm. uh, viewpoint as well. So now we're. At, a team, we're gelling, and each day the teamwork is getting better, and that's the key to this because there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. We don't know the pace of when the families are actually coming, except well, we do, but we don't. You know what I mean? And, and we don't know if uh, they're going to come in waves or if they're going to come separately or if they're going to come in groups. And, and how to um, adapt to that. So right now, say, for example, if you had um, two or three families come, would you have the houses and yes. the furnishings available uh, basically right away? Yes, we're ready for the, we're ready for the first one. Wow, that's amazing. And so We're ready, actually. Uh, we're already well uh, working well into the second wave. Okay. But uh, we have to be careful with the... Uh, it's the finances and holding everything. Yeah, but we also have to be careful... Uh, what we say because we don't want to uh, uh, we don't want to al uh, alarm the families that are coming in we want to be protective of yes of, of, of their feelings because they're coming from a, a stressful situation we want to make sure that they're they've had a chance to uh, assimilate somewhat into the community yeah. so uh, so there isn't a whole bunch of excitement and publicity and they, you know almost like I mean when you think about it if, if you're coming from a war-torn country yeah. you didn't leave because you chose to you've yes. left everything you know 
and, and own essentially to come here. So it's not under the best of terms. The each That's correct. And each of the family have their own separate stories of what's going on in their own personal families. And it's it. we have a system set up so that once the families come, they will be, uh, they, well, they've already been interviewed by the family selection team. They've been accepted into uh, the program. When they come to Knopf and uh, Deborah Slomski and her team will have a chance to uh, meet the families, set them up with their essentials. Then um, we're going to introduce the families or the landlords to the prospective uh, refugees and then have them sort of have a meet and greet and just sort of, you know, we're not gonna just drop somebody off at somebody's door, a doorstep and then leave. And then, excuse me, after there's a, I don't wanna get into too much of a plan because it's all subject to the parameters of what other organizations, uh, but we, we, we're we not just going to drop the, uh, the the families and say, okay, well, thanks for coming and, and uh, you're on your own. Yeah. We will support them and that's why we're here, the support team. That's good. And, and yeah, and I guess, I mean, when you think about the dynamics of it, it's, like looking in from the outside, it's so large because you've got language, so you need, um, you know, um, capable interpreters. You need, um, you know, not just the financial and the and the you know the physical support of food and, and housing, but you know the psychological supports. Like there's just so much to this Absolutely. that that you know I I just think it's just amazing that you've had it such an incredible turnout of people wanting and willing to help. And like, if you said you're committing four or five hours, I'm sure, you know, it's probably safe to say everyone else is committing between three and five hours and depending on the day, right? Because there's also the physical aspects of physically moving, moving something to A to B or painting out uh, an apartment or a suite or, yeah. you know, whatever it is, plumbing or, you know, all the things that might need to just be tweaked before they arrive. And the receiving families uh, have been notified, so they, like you say, they're they're uh, preparing their uh, their uh, their spaces for the uh, for the families. So yeah, there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, we're well organized. We have. Um, we have all, uh, and we're learning, like I say, every day is a learning experience for us, and and uh, we're, we're just going to, we want to make sure that we're as, as set up as we can possibly be. We've, we're, uh, the plan is to follow up with the families. We're going to have uh, different people uh, be like liaison people so that, uh, you know, one month in, how's it going, like you say, with the, the social aspects. Inviting people to supper if they're, if they're wanting to go out. Absolutely. Having a social, social thing sort of set up that they can... You know, reach out to the community, and the community can reach back yeah, as as they're ready. That's right, right. and that's the key. That's mm -hmm. the key. We want to make sure that uh, they uh, they are in charge in charge of their own comfort level. What might be comfortable for you and I may not be exactly comfortable for the next. We all have our different comfort levels, and and uh, when you uh, speaking about the language, uh, a lot of the parents. English is a second language, mm -hmm. so that's good. But what's really good, really great, is that we have Smith Jackson School here for the for the uh, for the children. Yes. They uh, they will they, their English, I'm sure, is not as well as their parents. So there, there'll be a chance for a, a bit of immersion for them, so that they'll have an opportunity to feel welcome and, and like. As mentioned uh, in the in previously in the, in the interview, everything has got to be parsed out uh, and organized so that everybody's not on top of them right away. So yes. you know, just let them uh, settle. Almost like in. a quiet welcome, a gentle welcome. Right? Yes, and and, and if, if my understanding is correct, at some point once they uh, once they've assimilated into the community. I, I think there's going to be a, a, a small celebration to, to welcome them uh, to the community. And I know there's a great organization or two great organizations that are planning something, but that's... That's down the road. That's down the road. Yeah. So, you know, to, uh, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today, Tamara. It's really a, an opportunity. And 
in future podcasts, I, I, I'm going to discuss it with the uh, members today, but I, I think different members from the group uh, uh, would welcome the opportunity, and I'm sure you would welcome the opportunity uh, to, talk, uh, to speak to the different uh, members. They all uh, bring uh, something to the table. They all want to, they have, they're all a, a part of this, and, and, and I can't speak to other people's personal feelings on this the, uh, and I, I, I feel that it's, it's an opportunity for them to, to say this is what I'm doing but you know what I mean like you know what I mean uh, and it's, it's it's just a great feeling that that Ryan Rollick is uh, involved because he he has connections and Jerry Joss he's yeah. he's he's got more energy than ten men. <laughs> he <laughs> he's, does. He's he's, he's, he's a he's, real light. He yeah. really is. And uh, Martin he he brings uh, his expertise to the table. Uh, we have Pam Winchisco. She's a, a phenomenal organizer. Uh, so and, and she brings she she brings her organizational skills and her connections to the table so we're gonna if we're gonna do this we want this to not only be a reflection on the community but we're we're proud individuals as well and we want to make sure that down the road we can say we had a part in that yes. and whether the the uh, the uh, refugees stay in our community or whether they go move on or whatever uh, whatever is in their future we want to we want to be part of their lives in the say in the fact that we we helped them we supported them and we did the best that we possibly could and i think that you know being ukrainian myself as well um and like my family's based, I think it was Pitlura and Ethelbert is where both sides of my family came from, mother and father, and then everybody moved to Dauphin. And I ended up back here, you know, and I think it's interesting um, because there is a there is a sense of home that I have here that I feel nowhere else. Like when I when I'm here and I take my shoes off and I run through the grass, there's something that just makes this feel like home. And I mean, this may not be their home now. But maybe they can adapt and they can learn to love the land like we have. Absolutely. And actually, you and I have more in common than you, than you might think. We're both <laughs> Ukrainian. I have a family and relatives in Pilar uh, area. And we, we probably have some common relatives if we, we probably, search. Probably, yes. <laughs> because uh, through, the, uh, through the marriages and stuff like that. Uh, we, and so, uh, and it's, it's a really a, 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 an honor uh, to spend some time with you today, Tamara. And mm -hmm. I, I, I really enjoyed our discussion. And uh, in the future, uh, if an opportunity comes, I want to have each of our uh, board members come and speak to you. And because I, they all have individual stories within the big story to share. It's like the Olympic rings, you know what I mean? We're all, Absolutely. We're all sort of spinning, but we're all connected at the same time. And, yeah. and I, I really feel that being part of a team is sharing the experience. So. Well, I would be honored as well, and we'll absolutely make that happen. I had been talking to uh, Roman and Don just briefly and kind of pitched the idea as well. So we were thinking the same thing yeah, without absolutely. even talking. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, absolutely. I can say we have more in common than you think. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's great. Well, Rodney, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing uh, so much about this beautiful project. And we're going to watch this grow and change. We'll be having some more guests on the show uh, upcoming. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tamara. And I hope you uh, uh, all the best luck. And you're, you're doing a great job in your podcast. And, uh, and you do bring a different perspective to the community. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rodney. All right. All right. Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa has been inspiring love, confidence, and health in humanity since 2019. Dr. Brenna's skin therapists have the advanced knowledge required to revitalize and rejuvenate your skin. Radiofrequency, microneedles, chemical peels, and oxygen neo superfacials are just a couple of the treatments we offer. To learn more about Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa, visit our website at threegraces.ca or call us at 204-572-5774 for a free consultation. A special thank you to Bankert Marketing for audio and video syncing and film editing. Thank you again to our show sponsors, Bankert Marketing, Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa, Real Security Solutions, Roofs Furniture and Appliances of Dauphin, Oil Depot of Dauphin, Tri Family Health Beauty and Fine Gifts of the Paw, Cloud Nine Canna Supplies, and Hearts to Nature Fine Art Nature Photography. 
Like and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube at Tamara Michelle. Talk to you next week.